Hey there, welcome to day number two of the Thriving Musician Challenge. I'm Evan Mazunik, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm just going to do a real quick recap here of day one. If you didn't get a chance to catch it, the replays are below. But again, day one of the Thriving Musician Challenge, we looked at how do you really uh, prepare yourself to be that uh, model of a musician who's thriving comprehensively. So that's about the inner work of your perspective and how you practice. So inner and outer work as a musician, how you really prepare yourself for this next phase of stepping into the marketplace. So if you want some more uh, info on that sense of how do you work on your private practice, uh, you can put model in the comments below and just share and I'll give you some trainings around uh, what's some good support for you there. Uh, but again, this is all leading towards the second phase here in day two. And we're going to look in at um, how improvisation and being creative really affects every phase of your life thriving as a musician. Uh, and today we'll specifically drill down to what it means to really perform in the market, in the marketplace. So I'm going to share my screen here. I've got my handy dandy tablet. So hopefully you can see this model. Again, this is a way for me to talk about and show really what are those three phases of being a thriving musician comprehensively, modeling uh, that sense and displaying that thriving characteristic. And I really want to highlight the transformation that takes place. So for me, that's going from being merely interesting, right? That's what that first I is, interesting, to inspiring, from interesting to inspiring. And for me, that's that journey from one to the next. So you're preparing yourself to go beyond merely, hmm, to I want to work with this person. So once you're prepared, and this is a continuous process and a cycle, how do you then step out into the marketplace to really perform, right, at your highest level? So for me, the key practice in the marketplace is how do you perform? Now that relates to promotion, but I really think the biggest two parts of this are how you help, and I am alliterative, and how you hype. How you help and how you hype. So if you're finding yourself stuck uh, on what to do, on how to offer, or wanting to create new offers uh, to increase your income, to expand your network, really, um, you've got to look at how you are doing something that's helpful to people. It seems obvious, but so often we want to get our messages in the marketplace from ahead instead of from actual other people. And one of the best ways I've found to do this is just ask, right? What are you looking for? How can I help? I do that all the time with us here in this community. How can I help? What are you looking for? If you want some more uh, framework around that, you can leave um, in the comments below uh, 13 because I've been able to do some study around what are the 13 fundamental human concerns that uh, today people are carrying around and they're really fundamentally concerned about things like body and play and family, right? They seem obvious to us, but when we try to frame our help for people uh, that results in some exchange of money, right? We want to ground that not just that it, this is interesting, but this is something that, for instance, might calm you. If you have some calming music, or this is something that will help you and your family connect on a deeper level, that mommy and me music programs really focus on that. So again, looking for ways you can hook your offers to things that people are already fundamentally concerned about. So if you want that list, just drop 13 in the list in the comments below. I'll go ahead and send that on to you, what I've learned from some great mentors of mine. So looking, how do you really powerfully help and tailor your offers to help people and be of service. The other part of performing out in the marketplace is hype. Uh, a lot of times we can get hung up on what do we say, how do we promote ourselves? And if you find yourself stuck, again, another way to do this is in partnership, right? How can you partner with other people so you can cross promote? How can you move from someone who is merely uh, creating, that's what this first C is, to collaborating? Now, you definitely have to compete, and you have to do this at a high level so you can attract those people who are going to want to collaborate with you. But moving from merely creating to competing is the key transition here. So I'm going to stop my screen here for a second, 
and to say, where do you find yourself? Do you find yourself creating or collaborating? Do you find yourself stuck on how to offer something that's even more helpful, more valuable? Do you find yourself stuck on how to hype, how to promote, how to get yourself out there uh, and not just do that in a way where you feel like you're screaming into void, but you're connecting with those people who find what you do valuable. You're partnering with those other colleagues and in institutions or podcasts that find what you do immensely valuable for them and their audience and those they serve. So go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Uh, help or hype, right? What do you want some more uh, information on? Or if you want the whole enchilada, you can just leave market in the comments below. Again, this is a chance for you uh, to interact and get what's helpful in serving you. I was going through and thinking, how can I talk about what improvisation has done for me and done for those I've worked with in really not just helping you be more creative, but helping you apply those skills across all parts of your musicianship. So I'm going to list off a little uh, few ideas I had about how uh, improvisation has given me some benefits. I did some brainstorming here. Um, it's helped me enhance my creativity, my problem solving. It's improved my technique. I've got a training on how to apply it even to your classical repertoire if you're a classical musician. Um, how you can build your confidence and stage presence. That's what my Unleashed Performer Masterclass is all about. Um, how do you encourage deep listen listening in the moment, in your real-time chamber music, which also can foster a real sense of communication and collaboration with others. You got to learn how to collaborate if you're going to go anywhere in this field. Um, it gives you that internal feeling of freedom and joy, increases your adaptability, develops your intuition, improves your teaching, right? Everybody's improvising as a teacher, whether or not you are teaching improvisation, and helps you really differentiate yourself from the competition and be even more distinct in a glut of amazing performers and people going out there. How do you set yourself apart, right? So, if you've improvised at all, made some music in real time, you know from personal experience some of these things, and they may seem obvious, but sometimes as musicians, we have difficulties putting language around the value of what we do, especially when we're entering an environment which may not understand improvisation, which may not value making music in the moment. So those are really, uh, for you, just a list of ideas uh, you can take and use as you're telling people what you do as you're integrating real-time music making in your practice, in your studio. So again, that list is hopefully expanding our imagination to how this uh, real-time creativity can impact all parts of your life. I'm going to go back to the screen here. A uh, few more minutes. So again, this uh, red, yellow, green stoplight is just how would you assess, assess yourself in the marketplace? Do you feel completely stuck? Like, oh man, I'm broken. <laughs> and need tons of help. Would you uh, give yourself a yellow, like eh, things have been slowing down a little bit, or a green, I'm on track and I like the trajectory I'm on. Go ahead and leave red, yellow, green, R, Y, or G in the comments, uh, and just get honest about where you're at. So back to making music in the moment. For me, uh, I've looked to expand this frame of improvisation beyond taking a jazz solo, right? How can you make music in the moment? Um, this RCM you'll see stands for real time creativity method. Because once you master learning how to make music in the moment, you can apply those skills to making pitches in the moment. I I've been on Zoom calls where I'm listening to somebody and what they're invested in and what they're concerned about. And I'm there designing an offer and creating a fresh pitch to say, how can we work together? in the moment. Uh, you've got to do that in the classroom. All of a sudden, your lesson plan is not working, and you've got to redesign and be creative or train somebody in the moment. So again, this process of being creative uh, and creative in real time is going to be key, not just when you're shedding in the practice room or when you're on stage, but when you're collaborating and out there in the marketplace. And tomorrow, we'll look about that idea of multiplication, of building your team and increasing your impact. Um, so I have got here what I call the four S's of this real-time creativity method. Um, and I put it on a compass because for me, this is a cycle that goes around and around and around, sometimes in milliseconds. Uh, so the time cycle might be near instantaneous, or it might be a little slowed down when you're maybe a little more leisurely practicing, or even the most slowed down way of doing this with music is composing. But I think everybody goes through this phase, these four phases, 
or steps of uh, real-time music. So I'm going to outline that for us. So the first step that you got to be engaged in is learning how to search. Search for an idea. What that requires from you is the courage to surrender. Surrender to the moment. Relinquish your plans. Be open and vulnerable to search for that idea. You might get that idea from an audience member if you're taking a more of a whose line is it anyway approach. You might get that idea from your inner fantasy, or you might get that idea from a measure of music you're using as a prompt, or you might get that idea completely from a blank slate from your uh, improvising partner. Wherever you are, you're always searching for that idea and having the courage to, and vulnerability to surrender is key for that. After that, you go straight into learning how to select an idea. And that requires that commitment, commitment to an idea. So many times when folks are just entering improvisation, making music in the moment, creating in the moment, uh, they're trying to do too many things. So just narrowing down and selecting. I mean, you could apply that into your marketing and just focusing on one offer, focusing on one delivery, focusing on one message, right? So whether that's uh, on instrument or out in the marketplace, having that courage to sift down and select one idea. We got two more. Uh, the next one, once you've selected a, that idea, how do you support it? That requires the care to really strengthen and shore up and breathe some life into that idea, right? Uh, my good friend and mentor, Jeff Agrell, talks about a map flap. And that's an acronym for as much as possible for as little, from as little as possible. As much as possible from as little as possible, right? So if you got one motif, how can you spin that out into endless variations? So that's that idea of supporting and expanding on an idea. And last but not least, you've got to have paradoxically ability to shift. And that requires a confidence to sacrifice and again, surrender your ideas. Once you've gotten all the juice you've gotten out of an idea, which oftentimes there's more available than we think as musicians, especially when we're in the heat of the moment. But once you've gotten that, how do you then shift either suddenly or gradually transition into a new phase? That could be a new phase of your instant composition. That could be a new phase of the semester. That could be a new phase of your career. But that requires that confidence to let go and shift. And for me, this is a cycle, right? Like I said, this may happen in milliseconds. And once you're going around and around, I like blue. I'm going to use a blue color here. This happens around and around. And you're always spiraling, spiraling through search, select, support, shift. Search, select, support, shift. So thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions about this uh, real-time creativity method, um, just put 4S in the comments. All right. Again, I'm looking for a way for you to uh, participate and not just absorb the information because the more you participate, the more you're going to get out of it, the more we can find ways to support one another. So go ahead and leave a comment below uh, and stay tuned for tomorrow where I'll talk about how to multiply your efforts. Thanks for watching and talk soon.